just want to make sure that um, uh, I will not talk about drugs, but I will talk about databases. Uh, uh, <laughs> let me introduce a little bit myself. Uh, my name is Nicola Galgano. Um, my alias is Alicon. And uh, uh, I work uh, in uh, real-time application management in a financial environment, so the, the big guy on the mainframe side. I don't work with Joomla. I'm a volunteer in this wonderful community and try to do some gifty pull requests and try to help on the forum and try to help on the Google Summer of Code project this year, like a commentor on the multi-language uh, project. Um, we are talking about speed, and uh, <coughs> nowadays it is uh, uh, one of the most important ranking factor, even for Google, and uh, people like our sites. There are some statistics that uh, explain that if your patient time load is very high, you lose visitors. So um, I try to, to concentrate this talk about speed. Every second counts better. Every millisecond counts. So if you are running in a project where the, the time, the speed is important, is an important factor, please be careful and, and think even at milliseconds, because uh, it's uh, very important. Do uh, you know these comics? Oh, yes. Um, so the, the goal of this talk is try to help uh, Willy Coyote to catch uh, Rob Runner. Silly joke. Uh, I have some knowledge about databases and I like uh, SQL. And so I'll try to focus this talk about how to read and write data uh, from a database. Um, yeah. But what is the situation uh, about the database management system market? Uh, in the last century, we, we have only the relational database. <coughs> and um, all, all the stuff are done using the relational database. At the beginning in, of this century, we are assisting at a first fruit. Uh, there are some specialized stuff for operational database and for uh, data warehousing database. Uh, <coughs> quite nowadays, we are assisting at another couple of split. If you look at uh, the data warehousing uh, matter, you see the rise of Hadoop, because it's very specialized on managing big data and retrieve uh, analytics data. <coughs> Even in the operational fields, we, we are assisting at the price of uh, so-called NoSQL database. Maybe, how much of you use uh, a NoSQL database? <coughs> Which one? Uh, RethinkDB. RethinkDB, so it's a document store. Yeah. Someone use uh, a trivial store? Or another no MySQL database? No one? Try Mongo, uh, MongoDB. No, I, I don't use it really. You are studying about it. Okay. Uh, uh, this is uh, my favorite quote uh, from Jim uh, uh, Gray. It, it was uh, one of the first, um, one of the people that was uh, uh, behind the standardization of uh, structured query languages, and uh, in. Um, in a recent paper, 2007, uh, made a paper when he, he, he speak about that the disk nowadays is the new tape. If you remember the ancient time of uh, information technology, the first storage was the tape, and all people store stuff on, on tape. Um, some years uh, later, we are assisting at the disk, and a lot of <coughs> that most part of the database is store uh, data from disk. But now the challenge is that the memory is in your disk. So if you want to achieve a, a, a good, a better performance, you have to, to think about this switch of storage. So uh, I want to talk to you about Redis nowadays. Um, I don't work with Redis, I uh, for Redis. <laughs> I use Redis. Uh, 
So the definition of Redis is remote dictionary server. It's a, an open source project, store data in memory, and could be persistable. And uh, one of the most important characteristics is that is uh, a key advan ad advanced data store. But let's see what this means. So it is an open source project. It was started in the 29 by an Italian guy, <laughs> Salvatore San Filippo, it's uh, better known like Antirets. And it's an open source project, so you can go on GitHub, on that repository. And if you are comfortable with C programming, you can see the code, you can submit a request and stuff like you know better than me. The main site is uh, predis.io, where you can find uh, very well documented about all the commands that are available in Redis. And there is a, a very uh, friendly community. And if you have questions, you can put on the forum and they, they, someone will, will ask for you. Uh. If you read the Redis manifest manifesto, you will see that the, the <coughs> The philosophy that, that is behind the, the, the born of Redis is that we want to fight complexity. We want to take the, 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 the things very, very simple. And please believe me, if I am here and I'm talking to you about Redis, it's a very simple thing. It's not complicated at all. It's very, very simple. So they still live up to their manifesto? Sorry? They still uh, follow the manifesto? I think, I think, I think yes. yes. I think this is the main, the main philosophy, that the path they follow. Well, the usual <laughs> development, the first version is always simple. And as you develop more, it becomes more complex. Yes, yes, but th they, they try to maintain the, the things understandable and very easy to understand. Even if, uh, I think now we are about version 3, and there are a lot of more complicated stuff, but uh, the, the, the philosophy that is behind it is to maintain the stuff simple, very simple and <coughs> understandable. <coughs> Uh, how many of you are familiar with the big O notation? Someone? <laughs> <laughs> I will try to explain so. <laughs> uh, it's a, a, a common uh, uh, notation used to describe the, the performance of uh, an algorithm. <coughs> um, and uh, it describes better uh, the worst scenario. Uh, I'll, I will make you an example so we can, we can understand it better. <coughs> Because um, wh when you have to fight with the um, stronger, stronger uh, requirements of performance, you have to, to ha you, you can have a, a big help when you, 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 are, uh, uh, you can have predictable performance. In this example, uh, I'll try to illustrate uh, how uh, uh, resorting algorithms uh, can, can, can be complex. You know that there are some kind of uh, sorting algorithm. Um, and if you are familiar with uh, some kind of uh, math function, you, you can be better understand. But I have another slide that I, I can try to illustrate a little bit easier and more understandable than formulas. Sorry, uh, I didn't see that. The, the green ones? What is it? What's the order? Yes, the, the green one is the the, the, the most the, the most yes, fast. Yes, the red the is uh, very. What's the, the I see the, the orange is the. It's middle. But I don't see what what is in green in oh, the, the green tags. Uh, oh, oh, oh yes, 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 and maybe in this case it's O N. O N. So it's yes. just okay. And oh. the other one is O N plus K. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So the second from the bottom and the first row. Okay. Yes. Um, okay, yes. Yeah, this is the, the, the worst, and to and end it related to the uh, potents. Yeah. Yeah, if you go it to the to the site, you can see a lot of other stuff that you can uh, help you to understand a little bit better. But uh, sorry, uh, I have a quiz for you. If you look at this simple code, uh, we are. Try to look if uh, um, an element is uh, inside in in array. In array. <coughs> uh, so, in your opinion, uh, 
how much how much cost this uh, algorithm? It's, it's not correct. I think the issue is double one. Sorry. Dollar factor. Ah. Bracket dollar i equals equals. <laughs> you know I <laughs> not the code. <laughs> So, in the, in the worst scenarios, if the element is not present in these vectors, you have to iterate through all the items of the array to, to give a response. So, depending on how, how big is the array, how is the dimension of the array, the, the, the cost of this function is n O n. So, you can assist a linear growth. Much more elements you have in an array, much more it costs. But this is, again, the, the worst scenario. Because if, if your element you are, you are looking to for is in the first position, your cost of operation is 01. Because uh, maybe this can help you a little bit more to understand. So uh, depending on the time complexity or, or a command or a function or an algorithm, you can see that you see uh, elements and operation. Uh, you can have a look at how much it costs this kind of piece of code. Uh, so it is more easy to understand at project time how much it costs that kind of piece of code. Uh, uh, so it, and this is an important factor. All Redis commands have this kind of information. So when you are dealing with the Redis, you can see exactly before to, to use how much it perform, how much it costs to use this command. <coughs> so what is a key value store? Very simple, key and value. In SQL term, it's simple like a table when you have two fields, uh, a key and uh, a V, a value. Where key is the, the primary key. You can access data only by key. And the value is a, a bar chart, a big bar chart, a blob, because you can store in a common uh, <coughs> uh, key value store. You can you can store everything you want. You can see, you can see you can store image, bytes, strings, integer, and a lot of stuff like this. Uh, so the, the most common uh, data structure for Redis and for key value store is strings. Uh, in Redis, uh, the string is used to store three types of values, a byte string, integer, and quality point values. Keep in mind that in, in strings, you can store whatever you want, even a JSON object. Redis thinks about only like a string. So what are the common operations that we can perform about strings? Uh, obviously, set and get. Uh, if you compare in the SQL world, uh, it's quite simple, no? So insert or select a value. Please note the, the where condition, because we are referring about a key. Uh, some of the interesting uh, uh, command that you can perform already is uh, are increment, increment by a value, decrement, and obviously we can delete a key. <coughs> All these commands, uh, most of uh, Redis commands are atomic uh, and are quite acid. You know what these mean? Acid? Acid? Yes. Atomic, isolated, consistent, and durable. durable. Okay, uh, maybe for another another presentation. <laughs> uh, one of the most interest, uh, interesting fe interesting feature that we can have uh, in, in Redis is that you can give a, 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 an expiration time to a key. Simply uh, issue with the, uh, um, a simple command expire key and a number of seconds, or expire at key and giving a timestamp. There is another uh, cool uh, command that is TTL. If you give a key, it responds and, and tell you how much time they, that this key, that key, uh, live in memory. 
obviously in uh, uh, some point of, of time you can uh, you want to uh, keep persist so you can override the expiration uh, feature that's all with this simple command we can do a lot of stuff and in a very very fast way so I, I, I do my job I, I help uh, Rob Runner <laughs> I help Will Coyote to catch Rob Runner but so this is quite uh, popular nowadays. Mm. There are a lot of big companies that using, uh, are using Redis, Twitter, Stack Overflow, GitHub, and even Zoom. <laughs> uh, uh, if you have uh, assisted yesterday, uh, maybe we talk uh, uh, from Radek about cache, uh, I will try in, in this slide to give you an overall picture about how, how many type of cache we can have. Uh, we, I try to concentrate my effort only at that level, the red one, at the application cache. Because most of the time, the, um, the, the time is consumed uh, about routine data for database, apart from all other stuff. And in, in this kind of fields, Redis is very, very do a very good job. So, we are talking about Joomla. Starting from Joomla 3.4.0, we can implement cache with Redis. Uh, someone who has experience it, maybe not, not work very well, but you can. <coughs> but Redis is much more than this. Sorry, can you go back to the... Yeah. Oh. So, uh, how do you select the, because I, I don't remember having the option of Redis as cache and uh, you have to I have to install it? So yes, yeah, you, yeah, you, you need to have the driver. Okay, the so it's just applying it from yeah. Joomla? And no, you have to, uh, your system has to, to be Redis compatible. Okay. You have to have, to have in the, your PHP, PHP, you need the library of uh, Redis and you have Redis installed on your system or ever. Redis is not shipped with Joomla, the driver? No. No, 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 no the code is, is there, the driver code, the PHP driver is in there, but you have to, to have the, 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 well, the driver. The, the well, the Redis appears in the drop down, it's not the, the possible cache options when it's available on the server. Yeah, exactly. And it's yeah. not available on the server at the moment. Correct. I think about the drive itself, it should be. I mean, it's supposed that there are other places. It should be coded in Joomla, right? Yeah, I put some code in Joomla. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they should be in the red circuit or anything. So it disappears if you don't have the red circuit. It's like a ABC or something. It's better to use Redis if you have it instead of Fire or Cache. For instance, I always use Cache and I. And I just to store in file and yes. use that. Yes. Is it faster? Is it slower? Uh, I think it's faster, but uh, most problem is uh, configuring correctly the, that whole environment to use correctly Redis. But if you have installed and correctly configured, <laughs> uh, uh, please believe me, it's very fast because you, you store and you read the right data only from prime. So compare the uh, disk. <laughs> no, there, there is no there is no game. Um. <coughs> but that is uh, again is um, a little <coughs> bit more. It's an uh, advanced data store. It can so its popularity is due it from its simplicity, for its velocity, and because you, you can do a lot of more interesting stuff. Uh, that is O other than scripts can manage uh, maybe six uh, data structure types and uh, recently they have introduced some other but it's a little bit more advanced and I'm still studying so I can, I can talk about uh, this new stuff, new, this new uh, data structure. I concentrate on this. Uh, if you are a programmer or a coder, uh, <coughs> is, uh, is a common that data structure for you, and maybe even for me. And uh, I will try to illustrate how is the difference, uh, 
how we, 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 we can store information using strings or how we can store information using hashes. <laughs> Imagine that an hash is uh, Redis and Redis because obviously we are talking about key and string. Uh, hashes is uh, most of the time used when you have to aggregate and you have to use uh, aggregate information in one single piece. In this example, it's clear if I want to to get the name of a, a user or the last name, I have to put two commands in Redis. Or using hash, I can get in only one command. I give you some example to better understand. So, uh, um, a good thing that I read is that is quite a uh, mnemonic that every command starts with a, cap with a letter that re reminds you to the, the data structure. In this case, it is the H for, for hashes. Well, <coughs> when is it very useful to use uh, an hash? It is uh, useful to manage session and shopping cart, for example. Because the nature of this kind of data is, is uh, transient data. You don't have to, to, to maintain a shopping cart when the, the process uh, has finished. <coughs> Sometimes ago, I made a, a pull request, uh, maybe better, uh, request for comment uh, to let introduce uh, a ready session handler because as maybe you may know <coughs> one of the problems with the session using a table if you have a lot of visitors you, you slow down your site and if you are interested and want to see how we can <coughs> manage this kind of, uh, of, of, uh, <coughs> of situation look at this pull request it's still open no i think it's closed Merged or closed? No, no, no. <laughs> close it, close it. Um, maybe it's uh, out of staging, so we we'll, we'll go to receive. And I have to fix some, some other stuff. And uh, if you want to go all cooperate, yeah, I'm available. <laughs> um, um, so this is uh, some kind of comments that you can uh, uh, issue on uh, this kind of uh, data structure. <coughs> uh, it's quite simple. But I don't want you to spend uh, a lot of time about this. Uh, I invite you to, to test yourself. There is a, a very easy way to do without installing nothing on your laptop. Simply go to the, this site and it's uh, like a CLI emulator. And you can try your command, you can test, you can have uh, some, uh, some good feelings with this because uh, it's very easy. It's very easy to understand uh, uh, what happens when you issue one. Uh, this kind of comments. <coughs> Just to make a, a, a silly example here, uh, how to deal with sets. Uh, in the first row, I try to to set multiple values in the, my uh, record one hashes. And uh, edge get all command uh, uh, give me back all the values in the, my uh, hash. And obviously, I can use expire. I can tell, okay, Record one expired after one minute. <coughs> after one minute, th there is no, no uh, record one. And a useful command is TTL record one that helps you to, to say how much time these uh, data persist uh, are available on, uh, on RAM. So this one has 48 more seconds to live. Yeah. yeah. So I did uh, interactively and then it uh, that is yeah. so. <laughs> Uh, and another cool uh, data structure is list. Oh, what do you know which is a list? Uh, so is a, in Redis terminology, is a sequence of uh, unordered strings. You can store uh, about uh, 4 billion uh, of elements in a string, remember? And you can have duplicate in, in a string. Uh, the, the big connotation for this kind of uh, data structure for all operation is something like OM. So it's a linear row. Uh, the, cool, the cool thing is you, you can have some simple command to manage uh, I, to manage operation on a list. Uh, better example maybe. Oh. 
common use cases are uh, the queue, stuck, last in, first out, first in, first out. And uh, mm, a, go a good case is when you have uh, some producer consumer <coughs> problem to solve. Uh, I have experience with my friend, um, a project where uh, we have uh, um, an application that produces data and we have another application with written in a different language that need to consume this data. This kind uh, of uh, uh, data structure is quite, quite good to manage this, this kind of situation, like all problems with stack and queues. Uh, yes. Uh, another <coughs> cool uh, data structure is sets. Sets is, is quite like a list, but you don't have duplicate. You can perform a simple command. Again, you can see the first letter remind you that you are talking about sets. Uh, you can add element to a set. You can. Uh, query how much element has car cardinality uh, in a set. You can, you can query if uh, uh, a value is present in a set, this is member. And the most important, in my opinion, stuff you can do with sets is algebra of sets. You have a lot of commands that help you to manage sets. Uh, I give you an example so you can uh, better understand. Relationships. Maybe some of you use Twitter. Uh, These simple commands is very easy uh, to make a query about relation. Maybe if you want to know, if you want to have some new friends, you can only with a simple command because it's atomic and you can add friends. If you want to know how many friends one user has, simple. Card. If you want to know which common friends are two people are, simple intersection command. Obviously, difference. And if, if you want to know how our um, uh, the union of two 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 users, uh, how are all the users friends uh, with the union? So it's something like very similar to algebra sets. <coughs> uh, this is the, the last. Last one is sorter set. It's like sets, but it's sorted. It's sorted by a score. Uh, so all elements in the, this sorter set are ordered. Uh, um, one of the, the famous cases, the, the, the most common use case, is when you have to fight with problems like leaderboard, scoreboard, uh, maybe you know game in game. But I have uh, an example. Uh, sometimes ago, I, I, I bring some data from GitHub Jupyter repository, um, and uh, I will try because GitHub use and there is a paper about how GitHub use Redis to perform uh, some task. <coughs> so, if you want to know uh, uh, which are the the top five of Joomla contributor, uh, I, I mean, uh, how many commits a contributor make in the, in the, in the Joomla code? Uh, you, co you can simply add uh, at, uh, a key contributor, a score, and a value. I mean, I, I give you just two examples. And obviously, you can add when someone uh, perform another commit. You can use the, the command z increment to add something. And with the, the, this simple command, you are able to have uh, <coughs> top five. Um, I, I use uh, the z reverse range because um, really store the, the <coughs> store the, the data in a in a from the, the, the less to the to, to the to, to the uh, Lowest to the highest. Yes, so <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yes. So if you want to see the top, you have to use revenge. Or reverse, sorry. And if you want to the lowest, simply use Z range. 
Um, just some other words about key names. Uh, don't use too much long key names because you can be slower your performance. And obviously, don't use very short key name. Because uh, uh, the key name is uh, something like a schema that you have on your date. And it's very useful to understand what contains your key, what value contains your key. Um, a common uh, <coughs> convention is to separate a part of keys with that ball. <coughs> but Redis is not suitable to be used on all situations. Keep in mind that Redis store data in memory. So depending on how, how much RAM you have. So think about this. And Redis can be persistable. You can save even data on disk if you want. But it's a trade-off. So uh, Redis is about only one, uh, 160 comments. So it's quite simple. And your Redis curve is like and the most important is single credit so Redis perform one operation at a time so you don't have to worry about locking data you don't have conflict one operation at a time are performing and obviously Redis uh, some kind of replication mechanism master and slave uh, one of the common use case is to have a master that store data only in RAM and the slave that can use persistence and store data on disk. So when your master goes down, you have data and you don't lose nothing. Uh, another important key point that uh, Redis is supported that a lot of languages, even PHP. Uh, Question about the limitation of physical memory. Yes. Uh, so once you start Redis or start the server, restart the server, it takes time for Redis to get started? Because no. it needs to fill? No. Because if you don't use persistency, when you start the server, it's like every, every process uh, the system operator uh, came out. You don't have, you, you have your clean, you have uh, RAM clean, so you can use data if you don't use some kind of persistence mechanism. Um, if you want to have much more information about Redis, uh, if you go at this address, you can find <coughs> the book that was one of my first books I read about Redis. It's, it's free online. Uh, in, uh, it talks about Python, but Python is a very, I, I don't know exactly how Python works, but it's very, very easy to read the code, so it, it can help you to understand how the, the comments work. Okay. If you have any questions, <coughs> you say about the um, when you go back to the source, yeah. you have basically your access test. So, oh, sorry. Yeah. 
Yes. 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 Uh, 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 most of the time, if, if you uh, uh, delete the durability part of SEG, you know, all the commands are uh, persistent. So, in some situation, you have to, to make a choice. If, if, you don't, if you don't want to use data, so you have to use uh, something like a persistent mechanism so data on this. But most of the situation, your data are transient. Yes. So you, you don't need, and if your main goal is speed, you don't need to solve data on this. Thank you. 
asking that the pull request, maybe. <laughs> Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.